I made a media controller that can make your life much more simpler. Whether you're listening to Spotify or you're watching YouTube videos or you're just watching a movie together with your friends or your family. And here's a few demos to show you what this thing can do. So what all can you do with this? You can increase the volume. You can decrease the volume. You can pause the song. You can play it back or if you press and hold counterclockwise you can go to the previous song if you press and hold and go clockwise you can skip the song so just with two hardware components i was able to make a six feature device here's another demo where i'm switching from spotify to a, a YouTube video and yes I'm using NCS songs here to avoid copyright and I guess this would bring a few memories from 2015 I've spent considerable amount of time to make this as easy as possible to assemble and print and yes this does not require any supports to be printed and these are the three parts that I'm going to be using to build this particular device and uh, let me walk you through So I made sure to design them such that they're easy to assemble and easy to print. So the two hardware parts that you need are the rotary encoder and the ESP32 and a couple of wires. The parts will be in the links in the description and please purchase the exact ones as these models were designed for those particular hardware parts. After fitting them you can test the switch and the rotary encoder function and the placement of the ESP32 has to be in a way that your micro B slot or the powering slot of the ESP32 is facing towards the gap. Now go ahead and solder the connections according to the circuit diagram. Before you solder the other end of the wires to the ESP32, take the encoder holder part and slide all these wires so that your encoder is already through that part and you don't have to fit it and struggle with it later. Now, for uploading the code, I'd highly suggest you to go through the tutorial that's in the link in the description. It's an instructable link and that would provide the best idea on how to upload your code, especially if you're not used to Arduino ID and or if you haven't used it ever, you can go through that tutorial and upload the code. If you're already familiar with this and you already have an ESP32 board set up in your Arduino ID, you can follow this video and I've covered all the steps in short. This particular link is important uh, if you have to install the ESP32 board for the first time. And once we're done with that, we go to tools and then board, board manager. We search for the ESP32 board using the search option. And since I've already installed it, you can go ahead and install it in your system. And this is the legendary library that uh, help me make this project come to life and you do need the particular repository link to download the zip code once you unzip the folder you can copy the folder and go to documents arduino libraries and you can paste the folder here and since i've already done it i'm not going to do it this time and all i have to do is uh, load the code in my editor and finally compile it 
and before that before compiling it uh, if you want to change the name for your device you can go ahead and do it in the second line of my code here and finally press the upload button compiling may take a while depending on your cpu and once it's done compiling for connecting to the board and uploading it you have to press and hold the boot button on your esp32 so that's it the code's uploaded you can go to your bluetooth settings and you'll find this device always on when it's connected you can pair with it and test the device so before assembling it i'm testing it um, and then i'll finally glue all the parts together Now that we've done everything, the last step is to assemble this and make sure that the ESP32, the power port is facing towards the gap as shown here and uh, that's just to ensure that you can plug it in and also make sure that the rotary encoder is exactly in the center, I mean the rod is exactly in the center. To verify that just place the top part and see if it's aligning with the bottom part and then you're good to go. Now when you're finally confident with everything, use some hot glue to place all these parts together. You don't need to apply hot glue for the two circular rods that are going to be aligning with the other ones on the bottom part. They're going to be aligned and they're going to stay together just by friction. And as you can see, it was a bit misaligned, so I simply took it out and I twisted it to the other position, basically rotated it to 90 degrees and now it's perfectly in the center and I'm happy with how this turned out. But one thing I faced was the top part was too wobbly and it wasn't that comfortable to use it or like push it or increase the volume etc. So I redesigned it by adding a little bevel on the bottom. So this prevented it from moving away too much from the center and made sure it was stable. And that's it. I hope you like this and I hope you can make one of these yourselves. And the 3D printed parts will be in Maker World. 